Welcome to Koi. My name is Nicole, and I'm a clay artist who loves creating cute art mainly with polymer clay. In today's video, I'd like to share about how I began my artistic journey and the challenges I've encountered along the way. Just a little bit intro of my small art business. Before we start, if you are passionate about art and keen on connecting with a small artist like me, I'll be thrilled if you subscribe and like this video. I'm a small clay artist without a fancy studio. My craft corner is in my small room. Sometimes I also use the living room for varnish work and other packing. I started my small art journey in 2021 and it turned 3 years old this year in January. Why the name Koi? Koi. I thought about Japanese and Chinese name at first and then I settled on Koi which means I can create art and believe that pursuing my dream is not just a dream. I chose koi in English because it sounds similar to the Chinese words. As I've been getting involved in the local market, the title I got from the public was Q Art, which was completely unexpected. <laughs> I'll always introduce my brand as Koi the Whale Shark to let people know the logo is actually a whale shark as a lot of them thought it was a whale. But it is a whale shark. Does it look like a whale shark to you? <laughs> I initially began creating polymer clay jewelry and gradually started taking commissions for keychains, figurines and more. Reflecting on my first piece of jewelry, I can't help but wonder how I found the courage to sell it because it looks horribly ugly and different from my current work. Surprisingly, it did sell, which was a confidence boost to me. The latest jewelry collection I crafted left me feeling satisfied upon its launch and I think my perception of it has evolved since then. These are the commissions that I crafted something in 3D and it looks... uh-uh, no. <laughs> I find that my latest figure has shown much 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 more improvement from that. These pieces represent the milestones of my craft work journey and looking back on them has helped me recognize how my skill have grown. I always strive to further improve, and I've come to understand that everyone has different preferences. It's amusing that some pieces I may not be fond of have managed to sell remarkably well, which serve as a reminder of diversity of taste out there. Being an artist is never gonna be easy, especially in my country. It's not easy due to the lack of value placed on art. This field doesn't earn much unless you aim to become globally recognized. The harsh fact that it's a challenge to maintain a living as an artist without sufficient savings. At first, my art was just a hobby as I didn't really put much effort into it. But things changed in 2022. I started showcasing my clay business at local markets through pop-up events. I was so lucky to have the opportunity to participate in several pop-ups with free booth offers. And I feel blessed for the opportunities. I often get asked questions like, what is it like being an artist? How do you survive just doing art? And why is your art so expensive when you are just starting? Some people think that artists can only be singers or actors, which is pretty funny to me. <laughs> I guess they just can't imagine that an artist could be a painter or a crafter. 
the art world isn't really appreciated in my country, but that doesn't make me give up on my art journey. Never give up easily is one of my mottoes. After all, it is crucial to have a supportive circle, but it is also important to explore ways to earn a living. My online orders have been very limited. But I believe that having faith is essential to make sure that I'm still alive and breathing as an artist. I have participated in pop-up events and launch festive products to sustain my business. I found my air to breathe. <laughs> While joining pop-ups may not always be profitable, because the booth rate that you paid was quite a cost. I've committed to attending at least one pop-up event per month, sometimes even three pop-ups in a month. It's truly tiring sometimes, but I see it as an offline branding. I've had the chance to meet many artists and small business owners who are incredibly friendly and supportive of each other. It made me realize that I'm not alone in this artistic journey. Connecting with other artists for inspiration has become crucial for me. Even though our community here is relatively small, I genuinely believe that being open-hearted and connecting with others, even if they are in the same field, it can lead to positive and healthy competition rather than a negative one. After all, having a friend is better than having an enemy, right? Nicole 你一定要有几个items新的 Every time I connect with an artist or a small business owner, I just feel amazing. And it makes me think doing what I love brings me so much satisfaction and joy. Another significant reason that keeps me motivated is having a super supportive family and a group of uplifting friends who always provide me with encouragement and positive energy. Things also have been going so well thanks to many of you being so supportive of my art. I am truly grateful for it. It's so important to ensure you surround yourself with valuable friendships that propel you forward towards your goal rather than holding you back. In the end, you will realize that the community you have is just right for you. They will celebrate your milestone and achievements. Additionally, investing in online ads for festive products has been successful, leading to sold-out items during every festive. I am such a true blessed kid. <laughs> Running a small business requires extra hard work, but I always remind myself to take small steps and keep trying different approaches. It's important to venture out of your comfort zone and turn your passion into work even if it may seem challenging at first. The key is to start and keep refining your craft until you feel confident in showcasing your work. I know stepping out of your comfort zone can be horrific and turning a passion into work may lead you to hate that passion. You can just draw 
or paint or craft something, even if it may look shady to you now. How to market your products and where to sell can come later on. You just have to dive in that R&D phase and keep on repeating it till you think, this is it. This is the one I want to showcase. The world can be too noisy sometimes, but it's okay to choose not to listen. Just be you. I think I have gone a little bit too far. Uh, <laughs> but here's a little bit of advice as a self-employed artist. Remember that little by little does the trick. Take one step at a time and enjoy the journey. Believe in your hard work and have faith that good things will come. Don't compare yourself to others. Let them inspire you instead. Leave your studio sometimes. Step outside and get inspired by the world around you. I hope you have gotten to know me a little bit better from today's video. I'll be sharing more of my art here and hopefully connecting with you guys through art. And also remember to subscribe and turn on notification for more art contents updates. And I'll see you in my next videos.